Um, good morning and good afternoon uh, for everyone. Hope you're having a great Thursday. So welcome to our uh, now very, very common Horizon Weekly Insiders. Uh, welcome to the new guys and girls listening to us today, uh, now and, or, and later, either in our podcast or in our YouTube channels. Um, it's great always to be able to share our stuff with you. So very, very excited and happy to be here. And uh, let's start uh, with the engineering department. Luca, if you would like to go ahead. Hello again, everybody. This is Luca from the Milan office. So last week I had Stefano with me, one of the um, one of our historical node operators. While this week here with me I have Alexander, one of our senior software engineers, and uh, soon I'll pass the word with, uh, to him. But before that, I'd like to say that the tech team really working hard towards the goal of uh, um, achieving all the remaining uh, open tasks related to, to, to the alpha milestone. And uh, in order to facilitate this even more, we have invited uh, all our engineers working on this specific part of the sidechain project here in Milan. So not only Alexander, but also Oleg, also Sergi are working from here together with uh, Alberto, uh, Giuseppe and all the other people. So being physically together, as you can imagine, is uh, much better. It speeds up operations a lot. Uh, most of the work uh, which is conducted this week is uh, focused on the cross-chain transfer protocol testing, which gives us the possibility to synchronize the sidechain network with the main chain network. And uh, we should be at uh, a good point with that. But uh, now I don't want to cannibalize the all the updates that Alexander has for us today. So I'm uh, passing it to him now. Uh, please, uh, Alexander. Thanks, Luca. Hi, everyone. So our Sachin SDK development team is working on the next half a milestone, as Luca just said. Currently, we are mostly focused on cross-chain transfer protocol testing. I think that we are in a good point. So we are able to bootstrap a sidechain and transfer coins from uh, main chain to sidechain. Yeah. Sidechain nodes are able to sync with main chain and retrieve the coins that were sent to it. Uh, Cross-chain transfer protocol implementation also leads to various main chain core changes. So we have a lot of interactions with the core team, with Alberto, with Giuseppe. Cross-chain uh, Cross-chain transfer protocol development and testing is, uh, I think, the last step for the alpha milestone and is a crucial point of the whole system. Also, we have uh, good news about sidechain test framework. So we, its uh, integration was finished. Now, for being sure that everything works as we expected, we also actively use sidechain test framework to create numerous tests for sidechain to sidechain and main chain to sidechain node synchronization. So before we mostly tested that uh, isolated uh, within unit tests or in a head mode. In the nearest future, we will prepare another demo video or several videos to show you the process of sidechain creation and transferring coins to it. So that's all for now. Thanks. Thank you, Alexandra. Really looking forward to recording this uh, video you were talking about. And in particular, uh, what we will show here is uh, first we will start a, a main chain node. Then we will uh, bootstrap a new sidechain uh, then we will show you uh, that uh, in the sidechain we we retrieve some information from the main chain. Uh, we will then start another node, uh, which is a sidechain node using uh, our SDK code. Uh, we will show that there is a connection between the main chain and the sidechain during uh, a basic uh, forward transfer to sidechain. And then we will see changes in both chains. We will uh, then demonstrate that the sidechain received this transfer by showing new coins in the sidechain and coins, let me say, burnt in the main chain. And finally, uh, using these coins in sidechain for uh, uh, operations, sidechain operations, like transferring coins from 
the first sidechain node to another sidechain node. So this is going to be really awesome. And that's it from now. for now from the engineering department. Back to you, Angie. Thank you, Luca. Next one is Chronic on the infrastructure side. Hello, everybody. Um, so infrastructure department, um, the biggest news probably is the tracking server deployment, which happened this weekend. And um, a month's work, worth of work went into this, and uh, it went pretty smoothly generally. So uh, we did identify a couple of, of bugs, uh, which we weren't able to see in production. But most of that has been uh, fixed already. And um, in today or tomorrow, we are going to do another round of uh, restarts on the tracking servers, closing out uh, some small other issues uh, that we found. And for me, um, uh, moving on to sidechain testing. So uh, we are trying to set up a uh, separate test net just for sidechains which uh, will be public as well. So uh, once the alpha is released, there will be a separate branch in uh, the Zen Core repository, which uh, you can build from and then uh, connect to the sidechain testnet, which is uh, separate from our normal testnet. And um, everybody who wants is, uh, will be able to participate in, uh, in testing and uh, trying things out. And uh, I'm passing on to Alan with more updates from Node Tracking. Thanks, Kronik. Um, we'll point out that last time that the tracking server system got updated, I think was back in February. So we did have a lot of um, changes that needed to be deployed. A lot of those were addressing exploits that uh, dishonest node operators had figured out how to get the round of system and we've closed the majority of those that we all the ones that we've known about we're still constantly looking for other types of exploits sometimes they pointed out to us sometimes um, we figure out what might be happening on a server and discover those um, along with closing those exploits that's one of the main things was the um, enhancements in terms of scalability. I mean, we used to have maybe 1,500 to 2,000 nodes on a server that was comfortable for those servers. And now with the latest updates, uh, we've got 2,900 nodes on the EU servers for the secure node system. And those seem to be working just fine. In fact, we've actually decreased the um, database connection rights and uh, connections and rights down to about half of what they were by by optimizing and doing bulk updates and uh, memory usage is down maybe 30 40 percent so we're in a much better position for new nodes to come on board and move forward and there are details about all the different items in a recent blog post if you want to see all the changes and functionality because there are things like a new API sub keys that would, would help out and um, other um, reuse of old IP addresses and things like that, that uh, the community has been asking for and we're just finally getting deployed. Thanks. Thank you, Kronik and Alan for the tracking uh, updates. Next one would be Gustavo in the UX department. Hi, everyone. So for, we'll start with the help desk and we'll have Spencer to give the help desk update. Please, Spencer. Uh, good morning, everyone. The metrics for the service desk were uh, put into the text version of the Weekly Insider channel, but uh, highlights are basically we currently have 20 items open, two of which are waiting for support by staff, seven of which are waiting for customer and the others fall into various categories such as non-responsive and they'll eventually age out. And that's the service desk report for this, uh, for this weekly insider. Okay, thanks Spencer. So on the web development, uh, the new faucet communication features are live. So make sure to give it a try and provide some feedback. Now we have a referral program we also have bonus multipliers for using the faucet in consecutive days. 
and also another bonus round if you use the faucet in five days in a row. Our goal with this is just to bring new users to the Zen ecosystem and have, and have them get familiar with the project. So download our wallets, do a couple of transactions, also funnel some of the traffic to Horizon and Academy and have them learn blockchain in general. So it's basically just an entry point to the project and get people involved. On the web development side, we are also supporting the Horizon developer environment and uh, on Sphere by Horizon desktop version, we are testing a new build in which we refactor the batch withdrawal logic and that's it for my side. Thank you, Gustavo. Next one is Rowan in the business development department. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so a couple of different updates from my side. Uh, first of all, thinking a little bit outside of BD, more looking at the accounting side. We had an integration with Lumina uh, a few weeks back. I'm now working with our accounting team to kind of make the final tweaks that we need to make to ensure that, that platform is as useful as possible. And uh, most importantly, to allow us to start preparing our tax return. Uh, we are obviously a non-profit organization, however, we are not a tax-exempt non-profit, so unfortunately we still need to do the joyous task of compiling returns in the US. So that's well underway. Uh, Lumina is very, very close to being ready to allow us to complete that task. We're also doing a little bit of restructuring work on the budget side, just to make sure that we are spending in line with our resources. Uh, a couple of longer-term projects kicked off very recently. We had one with Major League Hacking, which has now had its kickoff meeting. Uh, I'm not going to take any credit for that at all. I basically sat silent while Jonas did his thing on the call. Uh, but that's another integration that we've had kicked off very recently. I'm sure Jonas will jump into more detail, discussing exactly what that's for and what it's intending to achieve. And then we also have a project with Flipside Crypto. Uh, talked about that before. Those are the guys that do the FCAS scoring. They also have a, a data analytical arm of their business. And they're going to be kicking off a project with us to really help us understand uh, our current liquidity position and how best we can create a strategy to really improve that. We see that as being one of our, our big uh, pinch points right now. Uh, and then on the more kind of localized BD side, uh, I'm obviously here speaking from Panama. Uh, we have the pleasure to welcome a new member to the team, Aldo, who I'm sure will jump in in a little while and, and make an introduction. Uh, but on, on the Panama side, Aldo is basically joining as a kind of local expert. We're coining a, a, a local Sherpa, uh, which is a pretty cool name. I definitely want to see that on a business card, but already had quite a lot of success. He's already making some great introductions here in the local ecosystem. And we have our first uh, MOU underway to kind of explore a couple of use cases that we'll discuss in more detail in the coming weeks once that's all signed and sealed. Um, that's pretty much it from me just now. We've had a couple of longer term business development integrations that unfortunately have went south recently, which we'll discuss in more detail uh, in the coming call once it's all finalized. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it from me. So anyone else from BD wants to jump in, please feel free to do so. Hello, everyone. So I am uh, at an event here in Tbilisi, Georgia, uh, where Gordon Einstein, who is a quite prominent crypto lawyer, is talking about Facebook's Libra and uh, his investigation about that. And it attracted quite a good amount of Georgian crypto community and I will have, uh, I think, good possibility of networking and uh, opinion sharing with them. And uh, I'm also rounding up my findings uh, and data from meetings and reviewing the, my, my trip to Ukraine uh, from from blockchain UA and uh, two days after it uh, our meetup and uh, the day after um, and uh, I think I will have more um, like uh, filtered out information about that on our uh, next call. That's all from me for now. Thank you, Vano. And now, uh, Crypto Panama, if you would like to introduce yourself, please go ahead. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Aldo. I'm here in Panama. Uh, glad to be joining the team now. Um, so uh, we've been having a couple of meetings uh, with uh, authorities at the local government and also a couple of uh, tech 
uh, companies which are leaders in the in the finance and uh, classified sector. So uh, exploring different possibilities for business development and and help out uh, to use uh, to uh, get use cases for the Horizon blockchain uh, implementation. So uh, very excited to be part of the team um, joining us effectively now. Um, so if you would like to ask any questions about me, um, I'm, I'm pretty much open to, to any questions. Um, I've been here in the, in the blockchain, um, uh, in the blockchain, um, uh, sphere in Panama, in the ecosystem for a couple of years now. Um, uh, met Dean a couple of years ago also, um, because of the, uh, the master node. Uh, the master notes and and we were uh, having a lot of, of, of discussions been following the horizon team for a long time and I think it's a it's a great team and I'm so happy to to be here with you so that's it for now thank you so much Aldo and once again a welcome to this uh, wonderful team uh, okay so Jonas is not here so next one would be Lucy on the marketing side hello everyone um, so uh, some final final updates about the Instagram giveaway uh, that ended last week. Uh, so we have five winners and each of them received uh, $20 in Zen. So thank you for participating in this event. Um, we regularly post pictures on our Instagram, including lots of behind the scene photos and candid shots of our team members that show really different sides of the project and then our team. So uh, please follow and share. And also, if you would like to be featured on our Instagram, um, please share with the, uh, us or directly send us your, Insta, uh, your uh, Horizon related pictures. Uh, and then also the current ongoing competition is for picking a theme for our software releases. The uh, community entry submission ends tomorrow. So um, currently we have already received over 100 entries. So if you haven't submitted anything yet, uh, please head to our uh, blog site and sub, uh, submit your entry. After the entry is closed, the team will pick out the top 20 entries for the community uh, for the last uh, for winning theme. Uh, the community voting will start next week, uh, so please stay tuned. And then also, Erica is working on the next blog post about our site chain development. Uh, this blog post will be about some interesting Q&A discussion. Uh, between our leadership and uh, our community members it will be very interesting uh, and also like uh, gustavo mentioned uh, we uh, have been working on improving our faucet and adding some you know really cool new features include bonus uh frequent visitors and people who bring us new users and uh, we have a release uh, i've already released the first version of the improved faucet, and there are more awesome new features that are on our list that we are still working on implementing them uh, so Gustavo's team and Jonathan are the minds behind uh, these movements. Uh, uh, maybe Jonathan can tell us more about it later on. Um, and then the other, and then this is a reminder, and also um, to let everyone know that uh, uh, we have a next uh, live stream, which is our first quarterly live stream, will be at the end of the uh, end of this month, not this month, sorry, end of October, October the thirtieth. So. Uh, we made the decision to push it back the uh, live stream uh, this month because that we um, think it, our team resources will be better utilized uh, during this critical time when everyone is uh, uh, really focusing on developing our side chains and uh, uh, it will be the best for for the team and also uh, more exciting for the community uh, if we move our live stream to the end of October. So uh, the time is uh, the date is. October uh, the 30th, uh, and then it's the same time, 1 p.m. Eastern time, live stream. That's it from me, thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Jonathan, you will let's continue. Hey, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, perfect. So, um, so we have a newsletter that's gonna go out about the faucet because it's a pretty big deal, pretty awesome. and. Gustavo and Tuan have done just an amazing job on it. So we'll be sending out a newsletter promoting the faucet in about one week because we want to give it a little bit of time to test to make sure that there are no bugs. Uh, we also have a blog post that will be going on and I've added 
the faucet to our welcome to the community email series. Uh, that way, anybody who joins the community will know about the faucet. Actually, I, I didn't know about the faucet for a couple of weeks after I even started working at Horizon. So I think it's important to get the, the news and, and word out about that. Um, and and uh, again, the purpose of all this is just try to drive repeat usage and encourage new community members. And honestly, I think the faucet right now, the way we have it is the best one in, in the entire industry. So I'm really excited about it. And that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Next one would be Dean on the legal department. Hey, everybody. Um, so first, uh, Aldo, welcome. Very uh, excited to have you on the team officially. Um, Actually, the first time we met, you were giving a passionate speech about the Balboa coin and how that could revolutionize uh, uh, the economy in Panama and give Panamanians a fourth decimo. I don't know if you remember that phrase. You coined it. Um, and for the rest of you, decimo is... Um, in Panama, although uh, people work 12 months, they get paid 13. Shocker, I know. Um, but it, each of those payments, that 13th month, is paid in three installments, and it's called a decimo. And uh, Aldo's idea was to create a digital token for, you know, backed by canal revenue um, and give the revenue to the people. So anyway, that was the first time I met Aldo. He's an extremely passionate guy uh, who you know has been in crypto for a very long time. I did try unsuccessfully, I think, to get uh, Aldo into secure and super nodes several years ago, but um, he's there now and, and probably running some nodes. So that's great. Welcome, Aldo. Um, second Thanks, thing, brother. Rowan. Yeah. Second thing, Rowan, you, uh, you mentioned that we're not, um, you know, if we were a tax exempt entity we we might not uh, be burdened with a tax return but just uh, to point out we should be thankful that we um are not tax exempt because the returns for a 501c3 uh are absolutely terrible and would require so much more effort uh your eyeballs would be rolling to the back of your head so we are tax um, we are not tax exempt and as a result our tax returns are just the normal level of pain and not that abnormal level of pain. Um, anyway, okay, moving on to legal. Uh, so I have been working a little bit uh, on the Zen Improvement Protocol uh, language, specifically uh, P. Stu brought up a very interesting point, a legal point, um, and passed it on to Jonas, who passed it on to me. Um, relating to contributors and potential patent rights that they may have in their contributions and how we want to handle that. And so I'm um, uh, tweaking the language that we have to, to clarify and accommodate for, for those uh, intellectual property rights. And otherwise, I've spent uh, probably the last 24 hours, probably a good portion of that, um, reading obsessively about um, sort of privacy coins and the regulatory environment and uh, how other projects are uh, sort of navigating the current regulatory environment. And that's it from the legal side. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Dean. Now, Rosario with Product and Engineering Department. Hi, guys. Uh, I am uh, calling here from the Milan office. It's been an exciting week. Uh, very electric and so, so excited. I have so much, uh, um, so proud to see the team here uh, working together, uh, a lot of complex activities going on and having our team from Ukraine work together with, with our engineers here in Milan. It's just been fantastic to see. Uh, well, uh, I've been here, uh, I've been having conversations with Alberto, Maurizio, about the uh, team growth and the uh, still the uh, the types of roles that are still remaining to fill. So we're continuing to grow the team. 
And uh, in fact, we've actually been getting positive feedbacks on uh, candidates that are pursuing and, and just doing their due diligence and learning about Horizon and um, deciding to join because of our weekly insiders and our um, live stream. So that's very fantastic feedback. So uh, we are a great team. And uh, if you are a developer, cartographer uh, that would like to join an awesome team, uh, please uh, contact us. Uh, so that's on the exciting front. So uh, something I'm not sure that Luca mentioned, uh, I think Luca was focused mostly on, on the sidechain updates, but um, not sure if you mentioned it, Luca, about uh, sapling. So Pierre, uh, so we have Andre is uh, working on, has been doing research on the uh, uh, latest sapling uh, issue that uh, um, we've been doing research for some time. He has moved into the implementation. So we'll need Pierre's uh, support to provide some just overall uh, technical uh, guidance. And uh, that's going to transition from, from Alberta to Pierre. So that's, uh, that, that'll be good. Uh, also, we've, uh, so Rowan had mentioned this some time ago, but uh, we uh, contracted with an audit firm that is going to be looking at our uh, code base. And this will be particularly important as we release our uh, sidechain SDK and also our new protocol that uh, we are working on. Uh, so we're still waiting on the start dates for those, but uh, that's to be coming in the next few weeks. And that is it for now. Thank you. Thank you, Rosario. Rolf, would you like to add anything? Yeah, got a couple things. Um, I've recently become more active on the Telegram channel, and I don't know what it is about the Telegram, but uh, it's possible to have conversations there differently than on the Discord. So I'm really glad that we use both those channels and uh, had a lot of uh, good discussions, a, a lot of us have. Um, just like I'm doing with the other parts of the industry, researching different projects and seeing which ones have made significant project progress and which ones don't. We see people dropping into the Telegram and the Discord that are looking to see, basically get a status update of where we're at. I know a lot of these people go back and um, make reports to other folks, possibly investors or uh, different groups like that. So it's always worthwhile. Um, oops, I guess there's some background noise there. Um, not here though. Uh, it's always worthwhile to uh, talk to those folks and, and answer questions. And uh, that's why I love having the blog where there's really more in-depth answers uh, than can be given in a, in a quick answer on Telegram. So for me, I'm looking to be out in uh, Milan uh, with the team week of October 7th. Uh, on my way there, I'm, I'm gonna stop in to Amsterdam and uh, I'd love to meet anybody that uh, is interested to talk about the projects. I'll be at Bitcoin Monday on say, October 2nd. Go over and uh, talk with Peace Stu over in Munich too. That's all I got, thanks. Thank you, Ralph. And now for the um, leadership closing thoughts as well. Rob, if you would like to go ahead. Thanks, Angie. Um, all right, guys, so a little bit of good news is uh, we were able to buy Horizon.io domain um, this last week, or yeah, this week. Um, now, it is a premium domain purchased from an auction, so uh, it actually will take several weeks before we can actually um, deploy it. So stay tuned on that. It's just the good news that we actually have the asset now. Um, the market is absolutely crazy, so I'm going to just touch the, the elephant in the room there. Um, there's really not much we can do about that, and I know that... Um, yeah, uh, it, it can be very stressful, just to, to put it mildly. Um, what we can focus on and what we are absolutely doing is we're on the final sprint right now for the sidechain alpha and getting that to test net. So this is huge for us, and we're just kind of heads down and charging forward on it. The team's pushing really hard here uh, and really, really happy with the progress. Um, so that's one thing. We're working on raising awareness for the project, continuing on doing activities there, and I'll talk more about that in a bit and then cultivating uh, use cases that bring real value into our ecosystem. So we can't control the market. We can control the tech that we bring to market and the products that we build on that tech. 
and then the businesses and, and use cases that we cultivate for it that actually drive value into the ecosystem. So we're completely focused and, you know, we'll just have to operate in this noise, noisy market environment that we find ourselves in. Part of that on the, the cultivated use case side. So you've met Aldo and Aldo, welcome to the team. Like super pumped to have you. Uh, the reason that he's here and one of the, the big things that we're doing, it, it's something we're calling Operation Balboa. So this is a, a joint kind of all out effort for if we want to cultivate use cases in an area, rather than doing a piecemeal across, you know, maybe a merchant here in this area, a merchant in another area, maybe some, you know, use case or, or client and in, in a separate one. We're, we're focusing on one specific area, Panama, because we have very good uh, relationships in Panama. It's an excellent environment uh, for blockchain applications, for cryptocurrency use cases. Uh, there's a, a very large, um, um, like a, a remittance uh, market there. There's a, a very uh, forward-looking government there that's actually looking to modernize, um, you know, government functions that we could potentially work with. And what we're doing is we're we're looking across the government space for government partnerships. We're looking at businesses, um, and Aldo's done a fantastic job already before even being hired and, and in, making some ridiculous introductions. Um, their academic relationships we're looking to have there. And really this is one big coordinated effort that you're gonna hear more details about, um, particularly from Rowan and Aldo uh, as we go forward. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of throw that out there that we are absolutely focused on making our technology uh, not just best in class, and, and I think we are, especially with the science and technology, uh, but also making it useful and getting it out there into the real world. Now, we do face some constraints. You know, so like I said, we can't control the market. We also can't control the regulatory environments in which we find ourselves. And you've heard little, little tidbits of it here uh, you know, across the board. So you heard Rowan mention that we had some BD deals that just went south. And what he means there is that because of a changing regulatory environment, or maybe even the perception of a changing regulatory environment, uh, there is a backlash. Uh, or again, maybe a perception of a backlash against privacy coins. And our project by you know, um, certain, certain people in the industry is classified as a privacy coin. So we're, we're right up there with Zcash, Monero, and some people's minds, and that's just what we do. And there are some business relationships that are, we're, we're not able to have and some that are actually just being canceled on us and partnerships that are being canceled because of this perception that uh, regulators are coming down on, on privacy coins. So we are, we are thinking, uh, trying to think outside the box here, and we have a, a tremendous opportunity on the tech side with the architecture that we're building with sidechains to maybe rethink uh, some of our design. And one of the, the radical, sort of radical ideas, and I'll, I'll say radical, but it really it's not because I think it makes so much sense in, in a bunch of different ways. We've been you know, pre-socializing in, in our uh, comm channels is the idea of moving the privacy technology from the main chain to side chain uh, or to side chains. So the opportunity that we have here is to have a very clean, simple main chain that really acts as just a truth engine to say that you know, consensus on all of the side chains that we have has been met or not met, and that's all it does. And it would be robust, be simple, you narrow vectors of attack. For instance, if there were a flaw in the cryptography that we currently have, like what happened last year, uh, where you could have, say, like an inflation bug, we wouldn't have that if we were to move the privacy technology onto a different component of the ecosystem. And then we also have a variety of other kind of uh, beneficial things that come with that full auditability of the, the Zen supply is a big one because that's been one of the critiques on having uh, zero knowledge cryptography in there. Uh, zero knowledge cryptography is, is a great tool, uh, a tremendous tool, and we intend to offer it as part of the toolkit that's available for app developers in our sidechain system. But it, it need not be necessary on main chain. So it's just a different way of envisioning this, and maybe it would be something that's more palatable to regulators the Zen itself wouldn't be classified as a privacy coin. Privacy would be inherent in our sidechain ecosystem, but it would be on the application side. So like a layer two uh, sort of environment versus layer one. 
Um, so that, that's something that's been going through the, the community and, and team discussions, obviously very early on that of whether or not we're going to make any kind of decision. We need to get a lot more feedback. We need to socialize this. Now, something that came out of it, Gustavo made an excellent point yesterday that just looking at our white paper, our white paper has very little to do with the current project that we have. We have gone so far as a project in so many different dimensions that our old original white paper does it a gross uh, injustice or disservice. So we're just starting to rewrite this. I just put together an outline and we started filling out some of the, the basic sections. What we're going to do is post this in Git, on GitHub when we hit just kind of a minimum uh, maturity for it and make it open for uh, broader community comments and, you know, uh, commit edits. So that's that's what we have going on, guys. Any any questions? I'm not sure what's coming through on the mentee. I uh, have yeah, got some questions, uh, and then uh, uh, the first one is: Should we expect anything exciting for October? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We should be expecting a, a sidechain system going uh, alpha on testnet or on its its own testnet. I should say that's the biggest one. Okay, about the sidechains, then there's a follow-up question. More information on ultimate version for sidechains is always welcome. <laughs> Absolutely. And this is good because I just started writing it in this revised white paper. Um, so the, the vision here is that we want a, a general purpose blockchain of blockchain system where the main chain is, again, like I said, it's a very simple truth engine and all of the, the functional application specific stuff happens on sidechains. Uh, the side chains will have a cross chain transfer protocol that makes them interoperable with the main chain, and really only from for from the you know uh, consensus has been met or not met perspective. Uh, they are decoupled in consensus, so consensus on the side chains can be fully generalizable, and we can have an ecosystem with basically any any type of consensus running, any type of programming language, any type of um, you know, application that could be done on a blockchain, like smart contracting. We could have simple contracting, turn complete systems. Really, everything's possible. We can have tokenization systems. One thing that I'm really a big fan of is having a price stable asset um, uh, sidechain, so that we can have things like a Zen Dollar, um, you know, Zen Euro, and things that would actually be useful in commerce uh, without the price volatility that you have in the cryptocurrency space. And then extending or maybe generalizing the tech a little bit further, that cross-chain transfer protocol that makes it possible to communicate from main chain to side chain and vice versa could also be included on, as an example, the price stable asset side chain so that the Zen dollar would now be compatible with all of the side chains that we deploy in the ecosystem that want to be compatible with it. So where this comes into play is just a, an example would be on a commercial use case, if we're building out with a commercial client uh, a side chain, we could embed, you know, embed in that side chain the ability to have a, you know, a, a ZUSD. So that, that's something I think is extremely exciting and um, tremendous potential with the tech. Now, of course, this is all potential. We're, we're at the stage where we're, we're deploying a very simple alpha version just to prove, you know, proof of concept. And then that needs to mature significantly to even get to a beta to the point where we would consider you know, putting this out into production. So there's a long road there, but the possibilities of having a general purpose system like this are absolutely tremendous. Rob, if I could add on to the, the side chain thing, I think one of the, when we talk about side chains, we talk about a lot of different things, but one of the things that we really, I think want to emphasize is that we're doing side chains differently than anybody else is. And the reason we're doing that is that we have the ability to make the changes in the main chain allow for the cross-chain transfer protocol that doesn't require a bunch of trusted nodes that make decisions on how to transfer back. That's how, um, as far as I can tell, everybody else in the industry is doing side chains. So this is new, uh, new software development, new intellectual property, a new way of doing side chains that's better uh, than anything else that's out there. That's why we have to do it on our chain and why it's uh, such a significant development. And the second no, thing, absolutely. Yeah. Sorry, uh, the second thing I wanted to add on. So, um, the, if we are able to move the uh, privacy uh, aspect to the side chains, which I think is a great idea, that would allow us to uh, 
address a couple of other issues uh, as well that aren't issues now, but they may be in, in the future. Um, it would allow us to no, have to no longer have to follow Zcash and their development team uh, for our main chain. We would be able to follow, for example, Bitcoin um, or something else. It would make the conversion at some point in the future to a DAG much more straightforward because we wouldn't have shielded transactions work to DAG, uh, the directed acyclic graph. It would also slow down the uh, rate of growth on our uh, database. Everybody that's running nodes is seeing how fast the uh, database is growing with all the shielded. So I think there's a lot of additional benefits moving the privacy side chain. No, definitely very well said. Lucy, anything else? Yeah, uh, thank you, Rob and Rob. Uh, so uh, the other question is, is there an ETA for the HDE? Hmm, do we have Jonas online here? Um, not seeing him, actually. Uh, so we, we don't have an official. Now, I, I can say that significant progress has been made. But in terms of priorities, uh, Jonas has been focusing on the Zen improvement proposal, the Zen IP system, and that's actually going live at the end of this month. Um, so uh, actually, basically in the next week, that's going to go live. Uh, so you'll see that on our GitHub. And then from there, uh, we'll be pivoting more attention into HD. But I know uh, Tuan and some of the guys on the, the web dev team have already been um, working on the portal. So that's really good. Um, things are moving, but I don't have a definitive uh, timeline yet. Yeah, I don't know the ETA uh, of it either, but uh, just got uh, uh, some updates from Gustavo as well. That seems like things are moving pretty fast on their end. So very excited. Yeah, um, you're right. A, a lot faster than I thought. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the last one is not really a question. It's just a very nice uh, uh, message from community to our new uh, team member, Aldo. Welcome to the team, Aldo. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Lucy, right? Yes. Nice, nice. Yes, uh, I'm very excited to be here. And while well, recalling on what uh, Dean and Rob said uh, earlier, and um, yes, uh, we met. Uh, I I originally it, it's funny because I meet uh, uh, like all the team members for different reasons. <laughs> you know, Rolf came here to Panama. Uh, we met at the blockchain embassy like two years ago. Uh, he came with his son. So hello, hello, Rolf. Um, then. Then, um, then I met Dean. I, I I didn't recall that we met at the at that conference. I thought that we had met at 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 the mall uh, on a meeting that we had because you contacted me. But yes, yes, I do recall this uh, conference. It was called Panama Glass. We were trying uh, to propose a Panama uh, native uh, coin uh, similar to the Balboa. For those of you who don't know, the Balboa is the you could say that the Balboa was the first US dollar tether created in the world. It is uh, the national coin of Panama, but we use it inter interchangeably with uh, the US dollars. It's worth the same, and it's the first um, it's the first dollarized currency in the world since 1903, when we became a republic and had independence from Colombia. So it's a, a very a very exciting thing. Yes, I, I didn't know. Yes, um, so. Uh, it's a very exciting thing to have that because, well, as you know, Panama has no central bank, has no capital uh, uh, restraints, and also no forceful use of currency. So it makes it makes Panama. This is why we have been coming up with this Operation Balboa. It makes Panama a great way, uh, a great place to implement uh, blockchain technology. Uh, and, and cryptocurrencies, as there is also no regulation in place right now. Uh, for some things, that's not good, but for, for, for some other things, it gives you the freedom to uh, operate in ways that in, in other uh, jurisdictions is more um, um, is, is more regulated. And, and the idea was to create um, a cryptocurrency that would um, be able to uh, be given to Panamanians based on the Panama Canal earnings and also be used by Panama Canal, uh, by, by, Panama, by shipping companies to pay for the Panama Canal transit. 
which is a major disruption in one of the uh, hundred uh, you know, um, companies, more uh, most important companies in the world, which is the Panama Canal. Um, so that was the idea. And I think this is an idea that we should pursue in the future. And part of the Operation Balboa, which we will be giving you more information in the upcoming weeks and months. So very, very excited to be here. Very excited to have finally land the team that I am uh, able to work with and implement uh, these great ideas that I think will make Horizon great again. So that's it. Make Horizon great again. I love it. Thank you, Alda. And thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, it's been, been a, a good update here and we'll see you again in a week. Take care. Thank you all guys. Bye-bye. Thank you everyone. Bye. Bye everyone. Bye guys.